Well, I think the question is whether the Conservative Party is capable of surviving the next general election to any uh, significant degree. As I've said, I think if the Reform Party were to get itself more organised, if Nigel Farage were to make a comeback, uh, by running in every seat, it could guarantee that the Conservative Party suffers a defeat far more significant than that which it suffered in 1997 and could be reduced to 80 seats or so. Hello, I'm Brendan Donnelly. I'm the director of the Federal Trust. And today I'm going to be talking about the future of the Conservative Party with the chair of the Federal Trust, John Stevens. John, I know you were up at Chester in the by-election recently, which some right-wing commentators have presented as not being too bad, sort of disastrous, a, a, a result for the Conservative Party. Do you share that view, having been there? Well, I don't think Chester is a very um, representative seat. Um, it was a marginal seat. And I think that the Labour Party made a significant effort on the basis that it was still a marginal. They wanted to ensure a victory. And what was really striking, I think, more than anything else, was the level of abstention um, by Conservatives uh, against... Uh, an improved turnout, I think, by by-election standards for the Labour vote. So I'm not sure how representative it really is, but any suggestion that the Conservative Party is not in very serious difficulties uh, in its current position in the opinion polls, I think is, is entirely wrong. The Conservative Party clearly is in a, a, a very deep hole. And it's very unclear at the moment how it might emerge from it. One of the problems, new problems for the Conservative Party coming down the road seems to be the Reform Party, which has said it's going to stand in all general election seats in 2024 and 2025. They didn't do very well in Chester, between 2 and 3% of the vote, but do you see them as, being, as coming to be major political players over the next couple of years? Well, again, I don't think Chester was really um, a good place for them to make an effort, and I don't think they made much of an effort. There is no question that were the Reform Party to focus on immigration and the degree to which immigration is likely to be an increasingly salient issue, largely because of the economic difficulties that the country faces, that always exacerbates the issue, then I think they could do a significant amount of damage to the Conservative Party, simply by running in every seat, which of course they didn't do in 2019, could actually turn a very severe Conservative defeat, which opinion polling at the moment suggests is on the cards for the next general election, into a very, very serious near wipeout situation. I mean, there are projections that uh, suggest that the Conservatives could be pushed to significantly below 100 seats. Who would be the natural clientele, the electorate of the Reform Party? In particular, would they be able to make headway in the um, red wall seats, which supposedly um, Boris Johnson won by his magnetic personality in 2019? Well, it's disappointment about Brexit, but by people who voted for it. Brexit was a vote against the wealthy, privileged uh, southeast of England by the rest of the country. It was a vote against London and other metropolitan centres at least as much as it was a vote against Brussels. And it was also a vote against foreigners, against immigration. And the Conservative Party has failed uh, on both counts. It has failed to satisfy the levelling up agenda that those who voted for Brexit desired, uh, removing wealth from the south of England or redistributing wealth from the southeast of England uh, and metropolitan centres to the rest of the country. And it has clearly failed to control immigration. And in some respects, Rishi Sunak, uh, both on account of his personal position, uh, his wealth, and on account of the fact that for 
a number of people who are sympathetic to the Reform Party agenda, he is perceived to be not sufficiently English, I think is a uh, an incentive uh, and a um, is, is a paraffin on the fire, if you like, of of those sorts of opinions. And unregrettably, that is uh, a line of, of thought um, in the electorate that could be very powerful in destroying conservative majorities across the country. One of the reasons it seems to me why Brexit is so toxic an issue for the Conservative Party is that it lays bare an internal problem within the Conservative Party, a division within the Conservative Party, between, as it were, the nativists, protectionists, those people who want to draw, pull up the drawbridge, and those who are, are pursuing the idea, the very sketchy idea in most cases, of, of a, a global Britain. Uh, where do you think uh, on that spectrum um, the Reform Party stands? Well, the Reform Party is unquestionably a nativist party uh, in the way that the Trump Republicans are nativist. And it is also a protectionist party in terms of its economic policy, um, comparable again to the Trump Republicans. And those two propositions are, in times of economic difficulty, uh, attractive um, to all those who feel uh, left behind, marginalised by the way in which um, the world economy has developed over the last 30 years or so. And that section of opinion drove the Brexit vote, and it, it remains unsatisfied by the way in which Brexit has worked out, and believes that the Conservative Party is no longer capable of representing its interests, and the Reform Party is able to fit that uh, section of the electorate very well. It will, I think, require uh, a level of leadership significantly better than it has at the moment. I don't think Mr. Tice is really the, a significant figure. The question is whether Nigel Farage will return and whether they are able to secure defections from the Conservative Party so that they have some parliamentary presence ahead of the next general election. That, I think, would be decisive in transforming what would be a very destructive protest vote, which could reduce the number of Conservative MPs, but would not deliver many MPs to reform, and a, a result which might, in fact, give them a parliamentary presence after the next general election. You seem to be assuming that the uh, natural fishing ground of, uh, of the Reform Party is people who voted Conservative in 2019. Uh, how do you think the Conservative Party under Rishi Sunak over the next couple of years uh, will react to uh, any headway more generally that the Reform Party makes? Well, I think it does depend on whether there is uh, a split in the Conservative Party, whether the Reform Party is able to attract existing Conservative MPs into its camp. And of course, were that to happen, that could indeed accelerate, um, precipitate, uh, an early general election. And so the, the way in which the present government, the present Conservative administration can head this off um, is unclear. I, I think they are paralysed. They are paralysed by the fact that the economic circumstances are such that there is really very little room for manoeuvre. And they are paralysed by the fact that Rishi Sunak himself represents a lot of things that that potential reform constituency doesn't like. It, it, it's a peculiar irony that the Conservative Party seems to have maneuvered itself into, that uh, if you like, um, Sunak, who's somebody very definitely from the, the Brexit right wing of the party, it is now seen by some on what we might call the left of the party um, as being their standard bearer. The Conservative Party is divided, is it not, into, into three um, camps, the, the, the nativists, the, um, um, the, the, the global Britain uh, brigade, um, and the people in the centre. And um, we wonder whether those three can ever be held together. Uh, and if there, there is a split, what the nature of it will be. 
would the Reform Party take over the Conservative Party or vice versa? Well, I think the question is whether the Conservative Party is capable of surviving the next general election to any uh, significant degree. As I said, I think if the Reform Party were to get itself more organised, if Nigel Farage were to make a comeback, uh, by running in every seat, it could guarantee that the Conservative Party suffers a defeat far more significant than that which it suffered in 1997 and could be reduced to 80 seats or so. The real issue is whether the Reform Party would be able to actually win any seats. Um, and that is the, the, the element which will determine what happens following the general election, whether the Conservative Party, thus reduced, is able to maintain a more centrist position or whether having suffered such a defeat at the hands of the Reform Party, it essentially um, merges into it or assumes policies that are exactly uh, the same as, as those proposed by reform. What do you think is the most likely course of events? Well, I think a lot depends on the timing of the election and whether Rishi Sunak is able to uh, run the full term. And that depends, I think, really on two things. It depends on uh, whether the economy uh, is able to stabilize or whether the current difficulties deteriorate further, whether the recession that is uh, currently projected um, is deep or not. And I think it, that will affect above all the saliency of immigration as an issue. And I think the, the other factor will be what position the Labour Party adopts on this. Um, and in particular, with regard to the constitutional issue, because I think what reform strategy is, or those who, who share the reform analysis is, that they accept that the Labour Party is going to win the next general election. Uh, they wish to create a clear constituency and a clear base uh, on a nativist, protectionist agenda. And then they hope that the Labour Party will be so paralysed by uh, the economic constraints which it faces, that it will be essentially forced to undertake a conservative uh, economic policy, that it will be restrained by Mr. Hunt's budget, essentially, and the limitations that that expresses, won't be able to really address a levelling up agenda in any, in any serious way, and will then hit the buffers of a constitutional crisis with Scotland. And I think there is a, a dis a desire for opposition among uh, elements in the Conservative Party, not just because they feel they've run out of steam um, after 12 years um, and must reform, but it's that they feel that there is a looming constitutional crisis, which they are very keen uh, to avoid responsibility for. They believe that if the Labour Party were to be the party that lost Scotland, that would be such a humiliation that this would be the basis for which there could be a return to power by a reanimated Conservative Party linked to reform, perhaps in some way, um, with, on a nativist and protectionist agenda, an English nationalist agenda, essentially. If I were in Keir Starmer's position, I'd be viewing the Reform Party with some benevolence because it's uh, surely possible that they will simply allow him uh, to get a, a very big um, majority in 2024, and perhaps so big a majority that it will enable him to continue for the next election and even the election after that, despite the economic and constitutional um, difficulties and dangers which you prophesy. Um, is that a, a correct analysis? Well, I think the problem for the Labour Party is that if it achieves a very large majority, um, firstly, it, the incentive to move to proportional representation and other reforms, I think, um, will be greatly reduced. But the, the other problem is that Keir Starmer's grip over the Labour Party seems to me to be not as strong as, as some suppose and as his current position in the polls might suggest because it will be trapped by 
the economic restraints. There is no money really to spend on a significant redistribution agenda to address leveling up. And this is likely to lead to a revival of the left in the Labour Party, uh, us seeking some economic solutions which will have parallels with the sort of things that reform and the nativist element in the Conservative Party will be advocating. Um, protectionism, um, a interventionist industrial policy, very significant taxation and the rest. And that will be difficult to contain. Uh, the idea that having won a large majority, the, the Labour Party, the left of the Labour Party, will uh, sit quietly and accept essentially implementing a conservative um, budget um, and the constraints that, that uh, exist at the moment for the British economy, I think is, is uh, very unlikely. And then on top of that, there is the constitutional issue. There is the issue of Scotland, which is looming. And as I say, I think whichever party is in power that loses Scotland will face a very severe reaction from the English electorate. And I don't see any uh, real thought by Keir Starmer uh, to address that issue. He does not have a policy, really, for Scotland. He has Gordon Brown um, suggesting forms of devolution and the rest. But this will not really uh, affect the current nationalist debate. The Scottish opinion might be ready for a federal Britain at some stage, but not this side of another independence referendum, almost certainly. So those are the restraints which the Labour Party face, and I think they're very serious ones. We're told that um, today uh, Gordon Brown will be coming out with a series of proposals on constitutional issues, including the abolition of the House of Lords. Um, will that be something which um, the Labour Party can profitably run with over the next five or ten years? Well, I think the issue of the House of Lords and the uh, notion that Keir Starmer has also been floating of, of uh, attacking uh, the finances of uh, private education, uh, removing VA, uh, the, the uh, exemption from VAT, um, is a sign of how concerned he is about the threat from his left, that he needs to make gestures in the direction of radical reform. Uh, he needs to make uh, gestures in the direction of a, a hard left agenda, um, a, a class warrior agenda, if you like, um, but without much substance um, because he is so constrained by the economic realities. Can I put to you in conclusion two related questions? Do you think Nigel Farage will ever be leader of the Conservative Party? And two, do you think he'll ever be Prime Minister? I think that a remaking of the Conservative Party essentially on a reform template in which Nigel Farage would have a very significant role, um, perhaps even the leadership role, is indeed a distinct possibility. What I don't think is likely, however, is that a nativist, uh, protectionist, economically protectionist uh, agenda is actually uh, capable of forming a government in Britain. I think the uh, economic market, international market consequences of such a prospect would be so ferocious uh, that they would be utterly discredited before they had a position of actually winning, winning an election. Well, it might even be that if Farage did become briefly leader of the Conservative Party, it would be a rerun of the Liz Truss um, debacle that the markets would make it so clear that they couldn't um, tolerate such a, an outcome, um, that, that his um, reign would be nasty, brutish and short. Yes, I think that is the case, but I don't think he will even get into government. I mean, I no, no, no. that agenda or the prospect of it uh, would be so damaging. Uh, in international markets as to be undeliverable. And I think that is also a constraint over the issue of Scotland. I think concern over Scottish independence will likely have a very negative market impact. And that will again constrain the position of the next Labour government on that issue. I hope you enjoyed this latest video. 
It's one of a series of videos about Europe, about Brexit, and about the future of the European Union uh, from the Federal Trust. Uh, I would hope that you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel, and then you'll have notifications of future videos, which I hope you'll enjoy uh, as much as perhaps you enjoyed this one.